Hey, it's Dr. H again. I want to extrapolate on some of the things we talked about last time. First of all, yeah, I'm still here. We're getting busier and busier, which makes me happy to see that people are kind of waking up to the idea that you can only socially isolate yourself for so long before you either go nuts or you're really hurting or something is suffering as a result of it. And I don't mean, you know, relationships or your social connections, but even your well-being. So I want to talk about, uh, I want to extrapolate upon some of the things we mentioned last time. Here's kind of the way I see it. You have a choice, which is to do everything you can to avoid exposure. But the reality is, even if you're socially isolated, you still are going to the grocery store, you're still getting gas in your car, you're still running, if only, occasional errands. And the reality is, if your system is weak, the chances are you're going to get whatever blows your way, whether someone sneezes on you or not, because it might be things that you're touching or you're exposed to, even in the course of those simple stops along your way. The reality is you got to fortify your system so that in reality, whatever does come your way, your body can handle it. The reality is you are innately made to fight infection. You are innately made to stay healthy and well. Yes, sometimes we get sick. But the reality is that if you are healthy, when you get sick, you get over it. Don't get me wrong. I don't for a second say that the care that I render cures or treats coronavirus or COVID-19. No, that's not what it is. It's that if you are doing everything to fortify your system, you may in fact get COVID-19, but in that circumstance, if you're strong, the chances are good, you will also get through it. And hopefully, we don't fully understand this virus, but hopefully you will then develop antibodies so that you won't get it again. Like I said, we don't fully understand this. We're not guaranteed that having antibodies to it doesn't mean you won't get it again sometime. But all the, all the science points to the idea that if you have the antibodies to it, you probably are resistant. So what do we do to strengthen our innate ability to fight infection? And I mentioned last time, sleep. That's one of the basics of immune function. We should all be getting seven and a half hours of sleep per night or more. And if that means that you have to supplement that with an afternoon nap, you should. That is a basic aspect of your well-being, including that of your immune system. Hydration. We all, in order to prevent dehydration, should never let thirstiness be our guide as to whether or not we're, we're dehydrated or not. You'll recall from previous video when this little guy was, was two months old, he was coming into the office as our little mascot. That's Bosley. Sorry for the interruption. So dehydration, staying hydrated. Forgive me, let me get rid of this little distraction. Okay, beat it, fella. Nutrition. I mentioned there are some things we know that nutritionally fortify your immune system, and there are things we know that, that weaken our immune system. Excessive intake of sugar should be avoided. We know that sugar weakens the white blood cell response, so do everything you can to fight the indulgence of a sweet tooth. Avoid drive-throughs other than maybe cafe yum, something along that line, where you are getting veggies and rice and fairly low glycemic or blood sugar elevating foods. Plenty of vegetables. We know vegetables and herbs definitely have immune stimulating effect. And that's particularly a true, true of herbs, garlic, and certainly vegetables loaded with antioxidants that help your immune system. But there are specific nutrients that we know also really help to fortify immunity. Vitamin C, preliminary studies in China using IV high-dose vitamin C is having really beneficial effect even on COVID-19. But I do suggest 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C two or three times a day. D3, 59% of Americans randomly assayed are vitamin D deficient. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, it's probably more like 90%. The amount of vitamin D to address low-grade deficiency or even substantial deficiency, 5,000 IUs per day. 
Vitamin D is now considered to be the number one most important preventative for colds and flus, but in reality, anything infectious is good for the immune system. Zinc. Zinc has been known for 70 years to be conducive to immunity. For cold, sore throats, it cuts the average cold in half from 11 to 14 days to 5 to 7 days. I prefer it in a lozenge form. And ideally, you would suck on, not chew on and quickly swallow, but suck on a lozenge two, three, four times a day to boost immunity. Vitamin A, really good for the lungs. If you're fighting something, that's when I suggest a good 15,000 IU per day dosage of vitamin A, but you don't want to do that as a preventative or prolongedly because too much is not good for the liver. There are two known antivirals, elderberry and astragalus. Just a swig a day of those, a little uh, a tincture dropper full of those each evening prior to bed, a great way to boost immune function and to actually attack viruses. If you're fighting something, much more frequently, three, four, five times a day. So in a multivitamin form, there's actually a formula we carry called Virusid. And Virusid is a combination of C, zinc, astragalus, elderberry. The difficulty with that nutrient, we can barely keep it on our shelves. But it's, a, it's the most well-balanced immune-stimulating formula I've yet carried. We dispense a lot of it. The last thing we should all consider, our GI health. It is estimated that 80% of our GI health starts in the gut, and specifically with our microbiome. That means the bacteria that fill, that line our intestinal wall. So that's what probiotics address, and I believe that everyone should be sure that they are addressing their GI integrity and health in order to maintain a good immune system. So a really potent, well-balanced probiotic, something else we dispense quite regularly, is very wise for immune function. If you've taken antibiotics, you destroy that microbiome. And now that makes room for bacteria that are non-naturally occurring to populate the GI tract. And that's called a form of dysbiosis, which means an imbalance of the right bacteria in your intestines. So if you want further detail on that, do ask me. It's kind of complicated, but in reality, relative to how to supplement, it's not complicated. You take a probiotic once a day. I like one dose with food the next time you take it, presumably the next day, without food. And um, we've talked about sleep, hydration, diet. Exercise, light to moderate exercise daily, definitely conducive to imp improved immunity. Stress reduction. And I would say that one thing that stresses a lot of people out is being completely socially isolated. That doesn't mean I suggest you have a party. You might make up for stress associated with being isolated with, with Zoom calls, Zoom happy hours, meeting a friend in the front yard talking on the phone daily with at least one friend, sending letters, reading, exercise as a stress reduction. And the last, and as a chiropractor, that which is nearest and dearest to my heart, maintenance of a properly functioning nervous system through a healthy spine. The evidence is overwhelming that having your spine adjusted stimulates the nervous system and therefore the immune system. That's not my theory. The science bears that out definitively. We know that people under chiropractic care have statistically significantly less infectious disease, and when they do get disease from a virus or bacteria, it is statistically significantly less severe, shorter lived. We also know that there's a direct, immediate white blood cell response to having your spine adjusted that stimulates the, a type of white blood cell called a phagocyte that travels through the circulatory system looking for viruses, bacteria, tumor cells, foreign invaders, and when it finds them, it engulfs them and bombards them with a negative charge and that kills it. There are more of those negative charges inside those white blood cells after an adjustment. Is it any wonder I'm here every day since this started? Is it any wonder I love feeling a spine release as it should, 
become realigned as it should because I know that stimulates the nervous system. And that is in fact the way that your innate intelligence manifests itself through your nervous system. If you have any questions about this, you need me to clarify anything, call, email, text, any of those. Feel free to talk. Let's talk about it.